Welcome back. Well, as promised in a previous video, I have another one of these light boxes that we're going to convert into LED. Now, the difference between this one and the one in the previous video is this one actually still works. If I plug it in, you can see it lights up. Now, based upon the time it takes to turn on versus the time I plugged it in, which isn't very long, but there is some delay, makes me believe that this is uh, fluorescent, but I'm not really sure. We'll find out once I get into it. It is quite heavy, but that doesn't really mean a whole lot. Um, we'll try that again. I'm going to plug it in right now. And you can see, it does take, you know, what, a second to light up, maybe a little less than a second. So that could be a ballast in there. Not, again, not entirely sure. I will uh, just briefly shut my lights off in here so you can see that kind of a warm glow that it has to it. So I'm assuming, again, if it is fluorescent, it's going to be a warm white bulb one more light you can also see down here it does have uh, a little bit of cracking in it in the original finish this one sounds like it's glass you can also not not see it on the camera but you'll see it in the light that there is a, a hairline fracture over here so without any delay I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing taken apart now looking at it again compared to the other one this is put together a lot differently it is a lot heavier, like I said. Um, so I have kind of curious to see what the guts are inside of it. Now this one did have the same cut power cord issue that the other one did. Um, fortunately, this had the power cord uh, connected to it with these wire nuts and tape. This one does not have a switch, so I'll have to find a way to put a switch into this. I'm assuming just drilling a hole in it and uh, you know just uh, mounting it that way. Now on the side over here, if the camera's gonna make it out, we can see that there's a couple little nuts and some extra holes. There's uh, some hanging tabs in the top and the back, because I'm assuming you would hang this in a window and hang it from the front, and then the weight in the back here would be supported by these tabs back here, which there's ones on both sides. There is a knockout in the middle here that has a cover over it. There's a couple more nuts here. Maybe this is where the ballast is. Uh, you have a little rubber grommet with the wire coming out. We're gonna change this to a grounded plug. And uh, a couple more screws on the bottom. Now, if you noticed, everything on here uses these flathead screws, whereas these screws here are Phillips, where that's kind of a little indicator that this thing had some work done to it because most of the time these older fixtures only used flathead screws to, so to see the more modern Phillips on it makes me think someone's been in here so the only way it looks like I can get into this is by taking off the front cover which would seem that it would be these uh, six flat-headed screws so I'm gonna go ahead and take all them off and I'm gonna jump video here and come back when they're out and that was fairly easy. You can actually take a look at these screws here and see that they're uh, not your typical machine screws because these holes weren't actually tapped. They were just kind of like, you know, located and screwed in. Which makes that, you know, pretty easy, but, you know, I, I would have preferred to see some uh, tapped screws on there with some, or maybe like a retained nut behind here. Whatever, it's not a big deal. It's still held in tightly and this thing's probably older than I am anyway, so who am I? Um, but we can see here that this is indeed glass. Um, it's held in by these little clips in the corner here. Again, it's not the most secure thing, but when it is screwed in place, it's, it does pretty well. Uh, you can actually get kind of an idea what this is going to look like just holding it here on camera. Because the light behind it is, you know, LED and that's basically what it's going to look like, I guess. A little brighter. You'll see the cracks in here. Now, there really isn't kind of any way to fix that it's laminated in there and I'm not going to mess with this glass because well actually that's card part of the charm of it you know it's got this old look to it people will like that and uh, you know it's not gonna it's gonna be modern and, and antique at the same time I guess with the LED edition now uh, this is as we can guess a fluorescent tube 
they had a 20 water in here this is just a standard uh, yeah it's just standard Phillips 80 water and it's pretty new as you can tell by the green ends on here I'm pretty sure all the newer bulbs have that and then inside the case here there's really not a whole lot to look at obviously because the unit we're trying to take out the ballast is going to be behind this piece um, quite a neat way they're affixing these sockets in here you can see it's just a plastic socket Let's see if I can turn my little camera light on here and they're held in with these like acorn nuts on the back this one's actually just a regular little nut here and uh, yeah in fact, actually, it does look like one of them was a place because here we go. There's another one of those. Um, um, yeah, sorry, one of those Phillips screws in here, and there's a flathead on the other side. I'm not sure if these are the original sockets or not, but they are pretty neat looking. Let's see what the other side looks like. See, this has got the standard two flathead kind of recessed screws in there. And also, we can see that these screws back here are what's holding this plate on. And uh, there's actually two different mounting holes, it looks like, for all those screws. So that's kind of interesting, too. Looks like they're using... Looks like they're using the outer hole on one side and the inner hole on the other, or, or however you want to call them. Opposite holes. So then I wonder why the reasoning for that is. Maybe it's... Maybe it's because the way the sign's going to be aimed. Because if you look at it, it's kind of hard to make out on camera, but this back plate is kind of angled this way on the grander scheme of things. It doesn't sit floating dead in the middle. And I think that may have to do with which way this is getting oriented. Like you can have it pointing straight like this, maybe in the window, or if it's on a desk, it's going to tip this way. So that's an important thing to note um, because ultimately this is what I'm going to mount the LED onto. And depending on which way this aims, depends on which way the light is going to come out of this box. I may end up having to eliminate this actually and put the LED straight in the back. Uh, this isn't going to hang in the window, I'm, I'm, I know that. Um, where we're putting it, it's going to go on a shelf behind our register, which is where it's been sitting for the longest. Um, so it's basically going to be how well it, you're going to see the light from that angle. Plus, it sits like this up high. Um, so that's pretty neat. I didn't really take that into into account, but that's that could be actually a good thing for me. Now, I'm going to go ahead and take this back plate off. It's the same procedure of removing the four screws, two on each side, and pulling that out. And then we're going to take a look at the cuts on the inside here. Well, opening the case doesn't reveal anything special in the world of fluorescent lighting. As we can see, we have more wire nuts. Uh, I really believe this thing was switched out at one point. You can tell by the color codes from the original sockets versus what they used. The wire gauge is a different size. I'd be pretty willing to bet that at one point there was a different ballast in here. Not 100% sure. Besides the point, we're going to take it out anyway. Now, I, I am using the traditional 12-volt power supply here that I've been using in my other builds. Um, I'm, I'm going to have a separate video on using these power supplies versus another method which would be kind of building the LED system based upon the fixture you're trying to build and then basing the power supply on that. I started going into that in this video and I realized it would just make it too long. So again, we'll come back to that in another video. For this build, just like the others, we're going to go with the default system that I've used and uh, mounting this is going to be a little trickier. It doesn't exactly have the same footprint of the original ballast here. And judging by the heat it's going to give off, putting this plate back in front of it like this one did may cause the, you know, a little problem, but you can see it looks like this may have been discolored from this thing sitting against it from you know the years or maybe the ballast before burned out and that's the result of it I'm not 100% sure but I'm gonna go ahead and take all these wires out of here and get this ballast out and see if what kind of options I have for mounting this bad boy 
everything's taken out now as you can see and you can tell by the discoloration back here where everything was sitting I still really don't know what's original here and what's not some of the paint is chipping off of it but I can't tell if it was originally painted or not there's a lot of these kind of heat burn marks in here which is strange you can see them back there the age of the unit you know who knows what this thing's been through and again here it is 2016 and it's yet another redo of it now the thing is is where we're going to put the components in here we have the power supply to mount where we're going to put the LED strip which is probably going to be back on this unit and the switch which I have to locate one I'm going to try to get a similar pull switch like we had on the other units and uh, that's really all there is to it for now I have to find out um, where am I going to run the power cord as well I'm thinking back here in the middle for this is so far so good like I mentioned it's going to matter where the LEDs are going to get mounted now judging by you know eyeballing it this back plate part up here seems like it's relatively parallel to the front face here and here if that's the case then I can just put the LED strip right in the middle of this as close as possible um, it seems that there's a hole right here I have to measure it out to see if it's true center or not but if this lines up on these holes I will have enough room for the power supply behind there there's sufficient airflow and it will have the right angle for the light to shine onto it the only thing is, is I don't know if the lights gonna be too close to the actual front or not the other units it seemed like it was a little further back so that's gonna be one of the other deciding factors if I pull this out you can see where this originally went back here if I can get it to go like that it would be even better one of my thoughts was to actually put the power supply on the end um, I'm not sure if that's going to create any shadows or not if I carefully pull the original glass back over here you can see there's a there is a little bit of a buffer in the corner here perhaps that wouldn't be as visible so I guess the best thing to do right now in the situation would to be to cut a piece of LED strip to fit and kind of do a dry run here. I do have a power supply set up so I can kind of rig this up to see what it's going to look like. I have a feeling sticking in the corner there might be the answer. Let's check it out. I went ahead and soldered on two wires to the end of a strip that I cut the length and passed them through the side of the box over here so that I can go ahead and give a dry run on this. I will go ahead and pull this into place. Actually, this looks like it may be one segment too many. Oh, no, actually, it's okay. I'm just going to have a little bit of overlap here in the end. Now, this is what I'm intending on doing, is getting it here like this. And what I'm going to do now is, is just get some little clips here and just clip this into place. I'm also going to back this out to the set of holes over here and just see what kind of light that gives me from outside the case. I just put a bunch of these binder clips here in the corner just to hold it in place for now. And if I kick this on, you can see it lights up. And I also put two screws in the bottom here to keep this plate far back. And I don't have the power supply back there right now, but I just want to see what kind of light that gives me. Also, that wouldn't really work in the corner there because it would block off some of the light. So I do have to try to get that in the back. I do want to take the cover here and put it in front again carefully since this is a heavy piece of glass and see how it looks yeah I like it it looks just like the fluorescent did except for it's cool white instead of warm white I'm gonna go ahead and shut the lab lights off here and see what that looks like Now what's nice about this one is, is you don't see the individual LED dots through the lettering like you did in the other builds. 
Um, that was something that you didn't see on camera. I pointed that out. You did see it on the, to the naked eye. I'm looking at this with my naked eye, behind a set of glasses actually, and uh, <laughs> you can't see it. Even with the naked eye, you can't see it. The camera, of course, still doesn't show up, which is what I'd expect. Um, there is some light leaking out of all those holes now that are in the sides of it and everything, so I'm going to go ahead and put some tape or something on the inside to block that. Actually, I have reflective aluminum, aluminized tape, which I'll use instead of uh, like black electrical tape or something. That way, you know, you still have some light reflective and reflectiveness. So I guess all there is now to do is to mount the power supply inside this thing somewhere. I'm not sure what the real state's going to be like on it. If I tilt this back a little bit and let the camera swamp out. There is a possibility I can put it right up here in front. Because the light doesn't really look like it's uh, diminished too much because it is down here in the corner. There's a lot of black space down here. You can't see what's behind that. There's some cracks here. Let's see if I put that in front of those cracks. You still see the cracks. So there's enough light bleeding around inside there, bouncing off all that white to make that not visible. So sticking that in front of the LEDs is actually a very viable option. I could put that right here. I can route the wires nice and neat along the front. I think that might be the way to go. That's also going to give it the most air space for cooling. I mean, it is in front of these LEDs that, well, the LEDs themselves don't get warm. The resistors in line here do. Um, well, actually, they do get a little warm. I mean, it's not going to get as warm as that ballast was in here. With that, I'm going to go ahead and mount that. I may even try to tuck it back here just to see if it fits before I go ahead and do that. Ultimately, if it's hidden from sight, that's better. But so far, where it is right now seems pretty good. Got the power supply mounted. This time I decided to use nuts and bolts instead of rivets since my rivet gun decided to not work tonight. Fortunately, maybe I can get this on camera, you can see this nut down here actually fits perfectly up against the side so I didn't even need to put a wrench down here to tighten this up. It just you know, caught itself up against the case and tightened itself. Um, there is a little piece of plastic that I could feel under here but you can't quite see that protects the pins on the bottom of this PCB from shorting out against the metal case not that they're that long but just in case um, I actually sandwiched that up between the top of the nut and the corner here because this little potentiometer here to adjust the um, voltage was actually slightly touching that bolt and uh, I went ahead and tested that and everything is fine with that and then you can see here's the other bolt. And I also cut these screws to fit the bottom side of things. You know, they are Phillips screws, but I did get pan heads, so they sit, or I'm sorry, not pan heads. The machine screws with the, you know, dished head or, hell, I don't know what it's called. You get the idea. And it goes in here. And that way it keeps it from, you know, poking out too far. You know, there's other screws down here anyway, but what the hell. Now I have to change this grommet out because it's just a little too small for the wire I'm trying to pass through it. Uh -huh. In the corner here I'll have to drill out a hole for a switch which unfortunately I don't have in my hands right now but that'll get drilled out and just have to get the power cord mounted up into here connected and then put the back plate on. Now even though this is already riveted or bolted in place I still can get the back plate in here with no problems, which is another great feature. And yeah, come back to it when I get this a little further down. This is what I'll call the near final product. Power supply mounted, back plate mounted, LED strip mounted, wires hooked up, everything ready to go other than the power switch. That'll get mounted in the back, the hotline or the load line, whatever you want to call it, is going to get hooked up to that switch 
and then that switch will get hooked up to this power supply. I haven't actually torn one of these apart yet, but peeking through there, I not sure if this is a linear supply or not. I mean, it does have um, uh, a bridge rectifier in there. It looks like there's some input output, you know, filtering capacitors. I see a choke in there, but it does have a pretty large transformer and I don't see an IC chip. So I'll have to take a look at one of those one day and see if it is actually a switched mode or linear. It doesn't really matter at this point. I just need a 12 volt power supply um, around, you know, no more than three amps, I'll say plenty of uh, power for this thing. But this is really all there is to it for now until I get that switch. I'm going to go ahead though and I'm going to put the front cover on this and just leave this powered up for a couple hours just to make sure there's no major issue with heat. And I'm also going to go ahead and put the tape to cover over the holes inside here as well to keep the light from leaking out. Picked up one of these pull switches. This is the type that could be pulled in any direction, which is nice. Um, the other ones that uh, you'll get for your fan are meant to be pulled downward a lot of times or from the side. And I'm not really sure ultimately where this is going to be mounted in its uh, probably many years of living past this uh, project. So I figured this would be a better way to go. Plus this uh, switch instills a little bit more confidence in me because it's a little bit of a better build quality than the other one I picked up. Um, really wasn't too difficult to put in, just had to drill that hole in the side of the case, which was just a half inch screw. Of course, I started with a small bit and then worked my way up to the larger bit. You can kind of see it's just tucked away in the back here behind this backing plate. This is the uh, liquid electrical tape that I just dabbed on the ends here just to make sure it didn't short out against this case. Not that there was any risk anyway, but better safe than sorry. And you can see I put a little zip tie down here in the wire on the, on the AC side of things. The DC side of things, they just have it just kind of tucked in here. And, well, that's pretty much it. I'm just going to go ahead and put the front cover back on this so we can get another final look at what it looks like when it's done. And that's going to wrap this project up. And here we have the completed project. I decided to go ahead and put some rubber bumpers on the bottom of this thing just to help with the screws that were protruding out. They never had them on there anyway. Again, this was meant to either hang in the window or put on a desktop. It had a variety of different mounting options. So, um, yeah, at one point it looks like the, if it had feet, they were taken off of it because it was hung in the window or it didn't have them to begin with. But where well, we're putting it in our store, it's going to sit on the shelf. And yeah, that's, that's a lot better. Yeah, it's sticking to the tabletop nice. It's not sliding along and digging the screws into the metal or the wood like it used to, which is nice. So without any delay, let me go ahead and flick that on. And that's it. I mean, it's not going to be super bright because that's not the point of it. But if I go ahead and kill some of my lights in here, you can see it does light up pretty nicely. With that, I want to thank you for watching as always. Don't forget to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if you want to see more of these videos. I'm still trying to get these things up a little more frequently. Um, I just find myself not really being able to get to doing the videos during the week as much as I'd like to. So I do save them for the weekends. Um, however, I do have a bunch of smaller, uh, quicker videos that I intend to put up soon. So keep your eye on for those. Thanks for watching.